G'day folks, Connor here from C-Dubs Media, back with another video. And today we're doing the top five reasons why you shouldn't buy the Canon R6. So, maybe don't hit the like button yet, because you might not like what I have to say. However, we're doing the video anyway. So hit that like button and the subscribe button, and let's get stuck into the video. Let's go. Hi Felicia, don't you ready? Can I please have a large flat white with two sweeteners and a medium chocolate dick shake, please. All right, so here we are with the top five reasons not to buy the Canon R6 or maybe the top five disappointments because these are the top five things that I was most disappointed with upon getting the R6. And the first one is more of a photography one, but also video. And that's having the ability to look down onto the top of the camera to see your settings through the little LCD that comes on other cameras. And for me, that is the Canon 90D, which I'm filming on right now. I bought the Canon 90D because it was this great video camera. And I got the R6 because it was an upgrade. I mean, I was going to full frame, I'm getting 10-bit filming, 4K 60. I'm getting a lot of upgrades, but there's also some downgrades coming from the 90D. And not being able to see my settings by looking straight down onto the top of my camera is a real disappointment. And one of the main reasons for that is I like to shoot low at times for photography and video. And I don't want to always have to be like lying on my belly to see my settings. I can just see that LCD and it makes things a lot easier for shooting. So when I upgraded to the R6 at a cost, I was disappointed with that. So that's a feature you don't get even though you're upgrading your camera. Now I knew that wasn't there, but it is still disappointing and I didn't realize how much I would miss it until I didn't have it. Now the Canon R6 also doesn't have a dedicated switch to go from video to photography mode. And that's a real disappointment. I like having the switch just there so you can just flick it as soon as you need it. It is on the dial, but there isn't a dedicated switch. And again, coming from the Canon 90D, I would expect this. When your camera costs twice as much, but you're removing features, that's a little bit annoying, a little bit frustrating, and I really think that most people would really benefit from and appreciate having that dedicated switch. Video, photography, video, photography. Simple, but missing from the Canon R6, disappointment. Now you might think this is a bit of a rant video against Canon, but I absolutely love Canon. It's my favorite camera. Like, compared to all the others, I just prefer Canon, but just because I prefer it doesn't mean I shouldn't be honest about it. The things that are missing on the camera, the things that they should include, instead of just trying to make someone like me buy an R6, which I'm never gonna get the full benefit of. I don't think I'm a full professional and I'm not shooting weddings and that sort of thing. So, you know, when you go from an $1,800 camera to a $3,600 camera, you don't wanna feel ripped off. And unfortunately with the Canon R6, you do tend to feel a little bit shaved on some of the features. Now, another issue that I do have with the Canon R6, and I guess this does happen with the Canon R5 too, is the file sizes and the difficulty that standard computers have in just trying to edit some of these files. Now, for me, upgrading my camera to the R6 was a big cost. Having to upgrade my computer now as well so it can handle the full features of the R6 is a pain in the ass and I really don't think that that should be the case. I think Canon could do some software enhancements here and get that file size and bit rate down a little bit so that we don't have these problems. And I do think that Canon could make these file sizes smaller and easier to manage through the PC. Now, for whatever reason they haven't, but it is a problem when you do have to upgrade your computer just to get the best out of your Canon R6. So again, disappointment. Now, if you do think that I'm just slagging off Canon, then I'm gonna say the next video is the top five reasons to get the Canon R6 and you should watch that because there's definite reasons for getting it. This one, I'm beating on the Canon. Next one, I'll be throffing over the Canon. So I'm being fair just in two separate videos. Now the next part of the Canon R6 that I'm disappointed with is that there's no custom function modes for video. So I did have it set up on my 90D that I'd custom function one would be set to film in my studio. Custom function two would be set to film in 1080p, 100 frames per second outdoors. So I was ready for every situation. Now, unfortunately, I don't get that with the R6. 
And for me, the R6 is primarily a video camera, but it's missing these basic video functions or shortcuts to being able to film on your video. And it really is a disappointment to not be able to have these shortcuts for video on the Canon R6, especially because it does so much video. It's so much of a feature rich camera for video, but then it's missing these little shortcuts and little features that do take time off your day, off your shoot, off your workflow. So it is disappointing. There's another thing. There's no custom function switch for video settings on the R6. Disappointment. Now the last one is here nor there for some people. Some people couldn't give a shit about this one, but I like doing a bit of landscape photography. Have a look where I am. Whoops, wrong way. Beautiful spot. Beautiful, so I'm here, I'm gonna do some photography and landscape photography and the megapixel count is low for the Canon R6. And it coming from a 90D where I had 30 megapixels, I do notice a difference and I struggle with it. Now it's not a problem if you're doing portraits or sports photography or low light photography or man, any other type of photography, it's really not an issue. But for these landscapes, you really want to punch in a little bit more and on a crop sensor with 30 megapixel, you're definitely able to punch in more on your image or on your composition and you can't really do that with the R6. So even though this is more of a video centric camera, it is definitely something to consider because you will miss those megapixels. Now the first four problems I have mentioned could probably all be fixed with some sort of software update. So you can change the custom function settings. You can maybe customize another button to go from video to camera, to go from video to photography, like the rate button. I mean, that thing is stupid. Get rid of that and make it like a quick flick button to go from photography to video. That would be awesome. Software update, you could do that. File sizes, software update. You could do that, Canon. Stop screwing us in the pooch. Give us something back. We spent a lot of money on the R6, and yes, it is awesome in many ways, but it is also a disappointment in many ways. Make sure you leave your comments down below on whether you think I'm just talking shit or whether you agree with some of my points. For me, they're valid points. I miss them all. I really miss them all, and it's why I'm not getting rid of my 90D. I'm going to keep the R6, and I'm going to use it all for video, but... The 90D has its place in my life and it will not be going anywhere, it's staying with me. Backup camera, 4K 25 frames per second, and then I use the R6 for 4K 50 frames per second, 25. Uh, so definitely they both got a place and I'm glad I'm keeping the 90D. It's definitely a value rich camera for the price. I would say the best crop sensor DSLR out there for video because of what it offers. But the R6, it's a beast. It's a beast compared to it in so many other ways. Thank you for watching. Links down below to the camera, the microphone, everything that I'm using in this video, there's links to it. I really appreciate you watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Check you.